Hello everybody, so I am back with an update of an old project that I have been working on for quite a while. It has been paused on and off for some years now. And what it really is, is a old Variac stack with a isolation transformer and a huge diode bridge. Uh, the enclosure were, were however badly damaged, so I removed the isolation transformer and the diode bridge, which I will later build in in separate enclosures. But I managed to save enough of the enclosure to uh, house the Variac stack itself. To bring up the Variac stack to modern standards, what I did was to add some neat features like a lockable uh, main power switch, a emergency switch, a uh, start and stop circuit, which also is a part of the emergency switch. So right now I can stop it, which cuts power to the transformer itself. I can start it again. If I hit the emergency switch, I'm not able to start the uh, main power supply again, unless I turn the emergency switch again. Um, it is a Lipka 13 amp 0 to 250 volt three phased variac stack, which we can see down here. We have the three transformers. Up here we can see the control electronics. There's a 24 volt DC power supply for the emergency stop circuit. There is a control relay. There is the main power relay. And there is a 20 amp slow automatic breaker. I also added three step down transformers to measure voltage between the three phases. And I also have up here three CR Magnetics AC RMS current to DC transducers. These uh, voltage step down transformers and current transducers are all connected to this PMA data monitor KS3010, which comes with a neat floppy disk drive for saving data. To give you a demonstration of how it measures voltage and current, I have connected my 9 kilowatt electric heater. So if we move over here to the stack itself, and we watch the monitor here, unfortunately I have not been able to change the texts on the display, but I could however change the ranges and um, limits on the measurements. So I will have to live uh, with some wrong texts. So at first we start up the main power. I can now turn the turn up the voltage and we can see it raises slowly. And as we can see the current also climbs up pretty nicely. So as soon as I hit 400 volt AC, I should have around 12 amp current draw on each phase. And as we can see right now, we have 12 amp on each phase. And we can just do a quick control measure down here. If we check this phase, see we are at 12 amp. The data monitor uh, have some uh, neat features. This is just one of the displays it can show. You can also go into this mode where it's just some stacked elements. Or it can draw a graph. This graph is updated uh, as one minute per division, which is between the horizontal lines, uh, vertical lines that you can see. So by turning the uh, voltage up and down, we can see that the sample's pretty good. It samples uh, eight samples a second. 
So by turning down the voltage, we can also see that the current declines linearly. And if we move on, we are back to the normal graph again. We can also exit and just have a overview of the group here. I also think it's possible... Okay, we can go back to the virtualization. What we have here is just different we can set some parameters, configuration of the channels. There's a event list. Well, you can see I changed the settings today and I have powered it on and off a couple of times. There's also the disk manager. So we can now save the data to the disk. So that's about all I wanted to show today of this project. It's nearly finished. Just uh, need to get the enclosure back together, complete all the earth wiring, and so on. So, that was about it. What I'm really looking forward to is using this with my Tesla coils to uh, monitor the current draw and see how that goes.